to understand more about variables and how they are important in experiments, let's look at this example. Does the amount of sunlight affect the speed of goldfish growth? You decide to test this by purchasing small goldfish and placing them in rooms that receive various amounts of sunlight. The length of the fish will be measured weekly for six months. Okay, so here's this experimental setup. And typically in an example like this, they're gonna ask you questions like you see below. What's the independent variable? What's the dependent variable? And what are some constants for this experiment? So let's take a look at what those variables really are and see if we can understand the variables and what they, how they affect this goldfish. So if we just listed some things that could affect this goldfish, let's say uh, ty the type of water would be one that would affect the goldfish. What else could affect the goldfish? The size of the bowl that the goldfish is in. How about the, um, the pH of the water? That's the acid or base level of the water. That's another one. Let's think about, uh, we could do the type of food. The type of food would affect the goldfish. How about the amount of food? That's slightly different. And, you know, thinking about the problem we just talked about, what about the amount of sunlight? The amount of sunlight, does that have an effect? So these are all variables that could have possible effects on this goldfish. So what are we going to study here? You know, if we look back at the question, in the question they're studying, which, which variable are we studying? We're studying the amount of sunlight. You look up here at the top, it says amount of sunlight. So looking at our list, the one variable that's going to be different than the rest, the one that we're going to actually change the amount of. We're going to, it says in the problem here, we're going to have different amounts of sunlight in the rooms. So the one that's going to be separate from the rest, let's see if I can separate these here. Let's see if I can move that. There we go. So the one that's going to be separate from the rest would be the amount of sunlight. So the amount of sunlight is now independent of the rest. So if you're independent, that means you're by yourself, you are able to take care of yourself, you're set aside, you're independent. So now we have this variable that's different than the rest, the amount of sunlight. All of the other variables in this experiment have to be held constant. These have to be held constant. They cannot change for the experiment. Because you're trying to see the effect of just sunlight, not on the other components, not on these other variables. So this amount of sunlight is independent of the rest. And that's the one you're studying. So going back to this question here, what is the independent variable? That would be the amount of sunlight that the fish receives. Again, think of it like this, all of these different variables that could affect a, a goldfish. The one that you're choosing and taking aside, setting it apart from the rest, is the independent of the rest, and that's called the independent variable. All of the rest have to be held constant. That means they should be the same for all of the fish. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a fair test. And those are called constants. So really, what I put here are some constants that could answer the question down here. Now, the only other part to talk about that's really important here is the dependent variable. What's the dependent variable? Well, the dependent variable in an experiment depends on the independent variable. That sounds kind of confusing, but here's what I mean by that. You're going to have to measure if there's an effect of the sunlight. Is there an effect of the sunlight? We have to measure that somehow. So up here, if you look, we're going to measure the speed of goldfish growth. How fast are those goldfish growing? The rate of growth. And so what I want you to think about for this is that the dependent variable gives you data. The dependent data variable, that a D sound, think of that with data. It gives you numbers, okay? And our numbers in this case are the rates of goldfish growth. So that's one way you can break down the different variables in an experiment. Think of all the different variables that can affect something. Think about the one thing, one variable that you're changing, that you're, that you're varying for your experiment, and that's going to be the independent variable. And that's the one that's going to be different for all of the groups. So I have different groups of goldfish in different um, rooms. They have different amounts of light. And what's going to be different here is the amount of sunlight. Each one will have a different amount of sunlight. What are they going to have the same of? What's going to be constant? That's going to be all of these things that we listed. 
And then finally, the dependent variable, think of dependent, dependent, and think of data. Think of that connection between those. That gives you the data, the numbers that you need. Dependent data, dependent data. So that's how you can break it down. You can always look in the experiment. What are we measuring? And that will be the dependent variable. That's what you're measuring. So I hope this little review and this example help. If um, you have any questions or comments, please leave those, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Again, thanks for watching, and if you haven't, please subscribe.